we got to give an honest look at where Alabama stands. So Alabama, think about what was being said before them before the season. You had two camps. You had one saying Saban was done. He's not who he was previously. Alabama's reign is over. The dynasty is dead. You had another camp that was saying, uh, I don't know. Whenever they have multiple losses, Alabama seems to come back with pretty forceful vengeance. Nick Saban and company, they seem to come back with uh, a bit of a mean streak. And the way that he was smiling and just kind of catching vibes at SEC Media Day and just kind of seemed like he was loose as a goose, that made me nervous if I was anybody else in the SEC saying, okay, Saban doesn't seem like his normal wound-up self. There must be a reason why he doesn't seem so wound up. When you're sitting there at the poker table and you got a winning hand, you're the loosest one at the table. You're smiling, you're cracking jokes, you're poking fun at your buddy because you have nothing to worry about. That was how it felt at Media Days. But when we take the honest look at, at Alabama and where they are right now, SEC champ, had one loss on the year in the college football playoff, set for an absolute heavyweight bout with Michigan here in the college football playoff pretty soon. It's surprising, but it's not. It's kind of where I land on when we take the honest look at Alabama with where they are right now. It's surprising, but it's not. It's surprising because if there were to be a year for them to fall off, this would kind of feel like the year, right? Multiple losses last season. Lose one of the best quarterbacks in school history in Bryce Young. The quarterback room to begin with was murky. Is it Ty Simpson? Is it Jalen Milrow? You brought in Tyler Buckner. You got a portion of the college football public saying Dylan Lott are going to look really good in the spring game, and they're not wrong. It was a murky, uncomfortable situation. This Bama team wasn't the Bama team of past that we had come to know when it came to this past offseason. Two new coordinators. Tommy Reese, who I think there was mixed opinions on with his hire. Kevin Steele, who I thought was solid, but still mixed opinions when he came to Alabama. This is the real kicker. Alabama coming into the season was 125th in returning production. Y'all, there's only 133 teams. 125th, basically saying all that production from last season, that won double-digit games, they ain't there no more. They're gone. So a lot of these cats that are going to do what you're asking them to do in 2023, they're new. First day out, like for, first day under the spotlight, all right? So how are they going to look? Saban's also over 70. Take of that as you will. But here's where it really got kind of a little bit uh, tricky. When they lost week two to Texas, that was when everybody and their mama brought the hammer down and said, Bama's done. Put a coffin on them. Put the last nail in there. Bury them six feet under. Bama is done. That was what we heard people saying. Now, those of y'all that are tuning to this show, you know we, we sort of tread lightly around that conversation. We were actually saying, uh, I don't know, guys. Until I see a dead body... Just like those movies, un until you see that character lying there, lifeless, in every movie, if they fall off a cliff or they somehow go right into the woods and are never seen from again, they're not actually dead. They're just somewhere else lurking in the shadows to pounce later in the movie or in the season. That was what Alabama was. We never saw a body. We never saw a two-loss Alabama throughout the course of this season. So it's surprising that they're where they are right now, but also like... But then again, like, is it, is it really that surprising? Because everyone on campus and on this roster for Alabama was recruited, if you were recruited to Alabama out of the high school level, a part of either a number one or a number two class. Translation, a lot of talent still at Alabama. Surprise, surprise. Also, you have the greatest of all time as your head coach in Nick Saban. So you knew at the end of the day, you have someone with a resume that is unmatched, that has proven Regardless of roster, regardless of coordinators, regardless of who's playing quarterback for him, he is going to find a way to allow his team to be successful. We've seen that now from him. Also, we've seen Alabama, and this was something we talked about earlier in this segment, but like they thrive off of years of multiple losses. The theme has been for Alabama, if they lose double-digit games, or not double-digit games, if they lose more than one game, rather, the year before, typically that the pendulum swings back the other way pretty heavily and they end up competing for and winning a national championship. That's been the trend. That's been the theme. So there, there's also, and this is kind of why it's not surprising, uh, there was the most disbelief around Alabama that we've seen, in my recent memory at least, there was more naysayers around Alabama to the point where they had to put together, not they had to, but those, those players took it upon themselves to put together an acronym in length, let all naysayers know, what was up? So you say there's a lot of disbelief. 
let's kind of reframe that. Disbelief, I think, for this Bama team was fuel. So to reword that, there was more fuel than ever before for this Alabama team. I don't think that bodes well for anybody outside of the Alabama camp, to be honest with you. So what's scary now is they're starting to build. Like I said this previously, and I think this is still true after they played in the SEC title game. I still don't know that we've seen Alabama at full strength. And when I say full strength, I don't mean like full health. I mean full strength as in they are 110% playing their best football. And they're still winning. They found themselves. They found their identity. It felt like that game against LSU was when it really clicked for them with Jalen Milrow, the way the defense is playing. Like They're going to build upon their identity now. They already have in-house. And that's frightening. Because going back to what I said about talent, Alabama's not like playing over their head right now. They're actually just starting to fill out their shoes, their five-star shoes that they're actually more than capable of playing, more than capable of winning how they're winning. And I think what stuck out to me against Georgia, Jalen Milrow was like 13 for 23, threw for less than 200 yards. Alabama wasn't crazy running the football. I think there were less than three yards of carry. You factor in sacks so that I understand, but still the point stands. There was nothing special about Alabama that day outside of what Jalen Milrow did escaping and making plays. But Alabama didn't like go the extra mile to win that football game. The defense played great. But what I want to say is all Alabama did in that game against the number one team in the country in Georgia was not make mistakes. So what does that mean? Alabama is capable of just playing their game and beating you. You talk so much about, well, hey, it's going to take this for this team to find a way to win. They have to have their best day on this day to beat this team. Hey, if Alabama, if they want to beat Michigan, then they have to do X, Y, and Z thing they haven't done before. I don't think that's the case for this Alabama team. I think this Alabama team is good enough from a roster standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, now at a quarterback standpoint, to where if they don't beat themselves, if they just play their game and show up and do what they're good at on that day, they're going to be good enough to win the football game the filter of the number one team in the country and beating them in the fashion they did with your quarterback being pretty average through the air, being pretty average on the ground as a team, and your defense playing the way they did, that's the formula. That's their game. If it's good enough to beat Georgia, I think it's good enough to beat anybody else in the country. So now for Alabama, they're terrifying. Again, if anybody wants to be mad at somebody, be mad at Lane Kiffin, be mad at Jackson Dart, be mad at the entire Ole Miss organization because they had them dead to rights coming off a game where they were limping out of the Texas game, they barely squeaked by USF, and then they had Ole Miss staring at them. And if Ole Miss took down Bama, we're not even having this conversation. Not even a thought right now. But even so, Alabama in the playoff, that Rose Bowl will be a movie. We'll talk more about it, I promise you, throughout the course of the next couple of weeks leading all the way up to it. We'll talk about the game itself. We'll give you our predictions. Bottom line, there's a lot to unpack here with Bama. They're terrifying. And it's kind of surprising they are where they are, but then again, really isn't. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.